broadcaster Barry Hyde is also, it says here, a frustrated rock star. <laughs> that's about right. But he believes that that's only due to lack of talent. We all have ideas, ambitions and, and a list of things we'd like to achieve. And Barry has ticked another of his boxes by becoming an author. His debut novel, A Higher Authority, is out now. And it was the Bedford Writer Circle who helped him master the craft. Welcome back to the studio, Barry. Nick, it's lovely to be back at Three Counties. I, I should have played a 70s song for you. Not at all. There is life beyond the 70s, as I am proving at this very moment in time. You are indeed. And there's, there's a whole story behind this book and how you, you were made redundant from your, from your day job. That's right. It's a theme that has come back to this programme a lot. In fact, it's a theme that I've lived myself. I had a complete career change when I was 36, when, when my business went broke. Mm. So I know where you're coming from on this. That moment when you realise that a career that you've enjoyed for, what, 30, 33 years... That's right. ...is coming to an end. What happens? It comes as a complete shock. Uh, the best description I heard was, it's a bit like a death in the family. And suddenly you're totally unbalanced, you're all at sea, your routine goes out of the window, and you've got nothing to look forward to. You get up in the morning and you think, well, what am I going to do next? And by then I was in my mid-50s, uh, and sadly, people don't want to know anybody in the mid-50s. That's just life, and you have to accept it. I sent off 200 more applications to jobs. 200? Oh, golly, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, I had a few bits and pieces, things like, they call it interim work, which is really senior management doing temping, but it's a posh word for it. I did a bit of that, and uh, people sort of used me in the nicest possible way. Uh, to pick my brain uh, and I was getting nowhere and I thought I've got to do something differently during this time I was writing a diary just my thoughts and feelings about redundancy how I felt and after six months I'd written about 80 odd thousand words and I thought ah well, what is that so 80 thousand words that means nothing to me a page of A4 is what 300 okay. so are we talking 250 pages to put it into perspective, J.K. Rowling's first Harry Potter book was about 74,000. Says a lot of words. So it gives you an idea. Did it have it was, wizards in it? It was book length, if you like. Did it have wizards? Oh, uh, well, there was me. <laughs> and I'm good. <laughs> so was this the first moment when you thought to yourself, actually, I can write, I can yeah. put sentences together, I can get a story together? It was just you that. You had no idea. I, before that, I'd just written corporate reports. I hadn't written a story since school, quite honestly. But I thought, I, I'm enjoying this. And uh, I wanted to take it further. I couldn't get it published. And I thought, well, let's learn about this industry. So I joined the Bedford Writers' Circle. What do they do? They meet monthly in Bedford at St. Mark's Church uh, on the Kimbolton Road. And uh, we read our work to each other. We help each other. We motivate. We, criti we critique and um, develop each other. Uh, we write short stories mainly. And with those short stories, we read them out and um, develop our talents, if you like. And that gave me the incentive to think to myself... It's time to write a big book, a proper book. I don't know why, but the thought of going to a writer's circle almost feels like my worst nightmare. Maybe because of a fear of producing something and then having it critiqued and, and people reading it and, and getting their heads around where I was coming from. I, I, don't, I just can't imagine myself going to a writer's circle. And yet, I know lots of people who do. I've met other people from your own Bedford writer's circle. Yeah. What would you say to someone like me who's thinking, that's just not for me? Well, writing is a lonely business, and you need encouragement and motivation. And this is the best place to get that encouragement and motivation. When you write... But do you? Are, are they ever a bit mean? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, honest, I think, rather than mean. People are trying to be constructive, and I think that's the important thing, and that's the great thing. Because when you've written a piece of work, you have no idea how good it is. You might be the next Charles Dickens, or it may be a load of... Dogs do die, if I'm allowed to say that on the radio. Um, but you'll find out, and you learn about the craft, and you develop. And it's interesting, we have people coming along. I mean, I have been going along now for, what, three, three and a half years. But you have people coming along who are very nervous when they first start out, and they read the first po their first piece, they're embarrassed about it. And we say, do you know what? That was really good. And you can see their whole demeanour lifting by 30%, because suddenly somebody has actually given them a compliment and they had no idea before whether that was good or bad or indifferent. It's a great way to learn the craft by being with kindred souls, if you like. I guess also with any creative pursuit, you have to have the courage 
to get it out there. So you may as well get it out to your, to your friendly local writing group than maybe putting it on the internet or, or to a wider audience, just actually having the, the courage to fail and, and to, to get those reactions. Well, hopefully people aren't going to fail. They're going to find their niche. I mean, you know, if, if you want to use football as an analogy, Let's. not everybody is going to be George Best. You know, some of us are going to be playing for Bedford Town, and that's probably where I am. I've, I've no idea. But I enjoy the craft at my level. And I think that's the great thing. The book is called A Higher Authority. We'll find out about it after this. This is Nick Coffer on BBC Three Counties Radio. Barry Hyde's with me. Not talking about 70s music, we're talking about his new book. Now, Barry, I've done a bit of research. Okay, the book is called A Higher Authority. This is true. And I went online to research A Higher Authority. Turns out that uh, it is actually the advertising slogan of a firm of famous kosher sausage makers in Israel. <laughs> well, there we are. What can I say? If you remember, you've read the book, our hero actually went online himself to try and search out a higher authority, and he found nothing. There, there are no Viennas in this particular book. Apparently their advertising slogan is, we answer to a higher authority, and they're the most famous brand of sausage in Israel. But well, this, I, I, this, I best order some then. This clearly wasn't your... Yeah, you, are, are we a commercial <laughs> station suddenly? It's, it's a Sausage in Israel, I think we can probably safely <laughs> say that that is nowhere near where we broadcast to. So it's not about kosher sausages. It's about a higher authority. Now, in the book, you display quite a, a refined knowledge of, of the secret services. Have you, have you always had a passion for spooks? Uh, it goes back to when I was a young lad. I used to love things like James Bond and the Saint and the Avengers. And if I'm honest, I'm trying to bring back that element into the book world. Uh, I think, you know, books are a fashion statement to an extent. In the 60s, we had people like... Uh, Alistair Flem Ian Fleming. In the 70s, it went on to Len Dayton. Then we moved on to sort of the big, expansive Wilbur Smith-type books. Uh, now we're into the Fifty Shades of Filth-type scenario. And I, there was no way I was going to write anything like that. And I wanted to write something that was exciting and interesting and hopefully people would enjoy. And I, I went back to my roots, quite honestly. And uh, at one point, I knew a bloke who actually worked in MI5, and uh, it was a secret. So we didn't tell anybody. But it, it kind of got the old grey matter going as to moving in that direction. And a higher authority, quite simply, is an organisation which nobody would admit to, funded by countries from around the world, to do good deeds and to take out the bad guys, but quietly. Which may or may not exist. It might exist, and it might not. Do you know? As I said to you earlier on... Don't forget, back in the early 70s, and it's only just been discovered, there was a secret organisation in Northern Ireland, which was state-run. So who knows? Maybe it's a true story. The, uh, the character who, who becomes known as Jonathan, the Oxford in graduate, uh, I kind of think when reading the book that you quite like the idea of just completely disappearing and, and reappearing as a totally new identity. You, you seem to be re revelling in that. I think that's precisely what I'm doing at the moment. I mean, I spent 30 odd years in the corporate jungle and now suddenly I'm a writer and I think to myself, Baz, you've just hit 60 and uh, you've reinvented yourself. Uh, I think that's great. I love it. I really do. It shows that there is life for older people and anybody who's been through the old redundancy scare or whatever else, what I would say is, you know, just give yourself a chance, go with your heart and life will move on for you. And it does. And it's great. I'm the happiest now that I've ever been, I think, because I actually discovered that I can do something that I really enjoy. Most people do a job because they've got to. I'm in the wonderful position that I've written this book and I'm like a kid with a new toy. It's great. He falls in love. Now, you've told me not to give away the ending, so I'm, not, I'm not going to. I'm going to be very oh, careful. No, I, I, want, I want people to buy them. No, thing. I'm not going to give away the ending. <laughs> there, there is a twist. 7 99 There is a twist at the end. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what it is. Suffice it to say, he falls in love and it's not a good idea to fall in love when you're involved in that kind of situation, is it, Barry? I think anybody who has been in an office environment would say, never have an affair with one of your colleagues. 
not a good idea. It never works out. Uh, and sometimes it can lead on to other interesting things. I'm in the middle of writing the sequel, actually. And uh, so it, it, I've, I've been able to sort of take these same characters onto another level, as it were, which is fascinating in itself. Same characters, that those that are still able to be taken on to the second book. Because they're, in the book, you know, some of them do there meet is, a there pretty is grim and, end, yeah. There is death and destruction, yeah, yeah. And I lost some really good chums. Because when you're writing a story, you, get, you, you actually get very close to these people. And, 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 you, and, and you know them, and, and you know the characters. Uh, and when they die, it's, it's very sad, actually. And, you know, you sort of, I was halfway through the book, and there's one particular character, and I'm not going to tell you who it was, but there's one particular character who I actually liked, and I kind of saw a lot of myself in this particular character. Which one? I w- wouldn't be right. Oh, go on. It, it was uh, Frank. Okay. Yeah, and uh, he was a he was a senior man, an older man, and sadly he didn't make it through to the end. No, of the no, not at all. Um, and and uh, you know I, I pondered. I thought, can I kill this guy off? And I did. And it really actually, it, when you do that sort of thing, it, it, it kind of motivates you to really move the story forward. Because, uh, and again, the great thing about writing, I, I do it all the wrong way, by the way, because a lot of people say you've got to plan every chapter and know exactly where you're going. I write a story as if I'm reading it and have no idea what's on the next page. And it just goes by itself. It's, it's interesting because uh, both John, Jonathan and Zan are very sad when, when he dies. And I wonder whether that was your sadness coming through and losing the character. Well, how would you feel if one of your best chums was uh, assassinated? It's a question that I'm very happily not <laughs> needing to ask myself at the moment. The book is called A Higher Authority. Um, I can't pronounce the name of your publisher. Is it Safket? Safket. Safket. S-A-F-K-H-E-T. Safket Publishing. It is available online and in all the usual places. And you're going to be in Waterstones in Bedford this Saturday for six whole hours signing copies of I have the indeed. Book. Ten till four, and I look forward to seeing you there. Barry, good luck. Uh, we'll look forward to you uh, reading the sequel I wonder what will happen next but no doubt it'll involve intrigue and death and a bit of romance as well if the first book's anything to go by. I'll come back next year and tell you all about it. Great stuff, I'm going to play you a 70s song just for you Barry. Thank you It's the Kinks and Lola It's me, Lola